All right, everybody, let's go ahead and kick things off here. So this is going to be our desktop trading platform. Again, if you haven't uh, done so already, Andy just dropped a link in the chat to download the desktop trading platform. So check that out if you were looking to follow along here today. First and foremost, what I wanted to go through uh, in terms of options trading, how are you, how, if you're someone who's looking to set up an options trade, maybe you want to do like an earnings play or something along those lines, and you're looking for a little bit of a little bit of trade inspiration. Um, how can you sc uh, scan for specific symbols that meet parameters that you want to trade based off of? Well, I wanted to show you all how we can do that right now. So off the bat here, we are going to be starting in our watch list tab. So the watch list tab, that is going to be located off to the left side of your screen here. Um, it's going to be these four bars this icon off to the left, these four bars, this is going to be the watch list tab. So let's go ahead and click into there. This will be our watch list tab. Now, what is shown on the screen right now, we have a pre-selected watch list. This is actually the same one I'm going to be using um, for today's demo, but I'll show you all what your options, uh, what options you will have when you're, when you're on the uh, watch list tab here. So right now we have the all earnings watch list selected. We do have a few different options here. You can choose from any uh, pre-made watch list. So we have the tasty watch list, crypto, dividend. You could also, uh, we have watch lists based on certain sectors. And then this is also where you can access any um, watch, personal watch list that, that you've created. But for today's demo, we're actually going to go ahead and use this uh, this earnings watch list. Maybe we're interested in making a little bit of a setting up a little bit of an earnings trade. Um, so we're going to do earnings and then just all earnings to start here. Now, what we can do from the watch list tab, uh, if we're looking to filter based on certain criteria, if we look in the upper right corner of our screen, we're going to have this filter icon. So we could go ahead and click on that. And you'll notice now we get a, uh, a filter list that pops up. So maybe we're interested in uh, trading or placing an options trade here on an underlying that that has earnings within the next 30 days or so. So what I'm going to do is just drag this slider down. We'll go 30 days. So as you can see right here, we're filtering for zero. Oop, looks like I lost it when I went to go to the Zoom tool. Sorry about that. Um, if you look right here, we have the earnings range. We're filtering from zero to 30 days. Underneath that, maybe we want to set our filter by a specific IV rank. So let's say maybe we wanted to go um, from an IV rank of like 45 to about 70 we'll go. Um, and then once we've set our IV rank filters, Maybe we want to take a look at the liquidity rating level as well. So at the bottom of the filter menu here, we have uh, our liquidity ratings, four star being the best or most liquid, um, one star obviously not being very, very liquid. So in this case, we'll just filter for four star liquidity ratings only. So once we've got four star liquidity uh, ratings filtered for, now we're satisfied with our parameters. Let's go ahead and we could just click off of this list. You'll notice now it that has decreased the all earnings watch list significantly. So um, whereas before we had quite a few symbols here that we had to scroll through, now we've cut down on those significantly. So these are all of the companies that meet the uh, parameters that we have set in our filters. All right, so now that we've got our filters set here, maybe we're interested in trading. Hmm, let's see. What about... Uh, go with uh, Pinterest maybe. So you'll notice if you click on the symbol that you're interested in trading, in this case, we're gonna be taking a look at Pinterest. You'll notice I left clicked on the symbol here itself. That line is now highlighted and you can also see Pinterest has populated across our active symbol area at the top of the platform. So it's very nice that once you click on a symbol from the watch list, it will populate as the active symbol um, across everywhere on the on the platform. So now that we have Pinterest selected, let's go ahead and pop over to our trade tab. On the left side of our screen here, we'll click that vertical trade tab. And one thing, one really cool feature, in my opinion, uh, that allows for the most efficient trading experience, I would say, in 
I would say, would be our right sidebar menu. So I want to show you all before we get started um, how to pop that right sidebar menu out. So if you look in the upper right corner of your screen, you're going to have this left facing arrow. This can be used to pop out our right sidebar menu, which is an extremely, extremely useful tool. Um, it has our little overview, our overview of the company that we're, we're viewing. Um, you can also get a breakdown of order chains, which I'll be covering later on. And it also allows for a one screen trading experience. So you don't have to worry about on our platform here, you don't have to worry about clicking to different tabs to go and place uh, different orders. You can actually trade every single product that we offer from the single trade screen that we're on right now, as long as you have this right sidebar menu popped out. So you'll be able to see any open positions, any recently filled orders or any activity in a, uh, the specific active symbol that you have selected across the platform. So this right sidebar is gonna be, it's gonna be great if you're looking for that uh, that one screen trading experience and you're, you don't have to worry about fiddling around to uh, find your position after you actually place and fill a trade. So the other thing I wanted to point out now, if your screen size and resolution allows for it, you actually can dock this right sidebar menu. That's going to be done using this left facing arrow again in the upper right corner. So if we go ahead and click on that, you'll notice our right sidebar is now, oops, looks like I popped it out. Sorry about that. If we go ahead and click on this left facing arrow. You'll notice our right sidebar is will now be docked. So once we've docked our right sidebar menu here, let me just close this real quick. Okay, so we've got our right sidebar menu docked here. Uh, I'm gonna undock it just for right now so I can show you all a little uh, what it looks like when we're actually setting up a trade. Um, it's gonna be a little bit easier to see if I just go ahead and undock this, but that would be the way that you could actually go about and dock the right sidebar menu. Um, so then you have it up there constantly. Again, that does create the one, uh, one screen trading um, experience. So now that we have our Pinterest uh, selected here, what we can do is uh, line up a little bit of an earnings trade. So we can see here on the options table, we're in the table mode here. So this is going to be your traditional uh, options chain. What we can see here, we have a purple thin line that runs across the, the options chain here. Now this is going to denote that there's an upcoming earnings. We found that out, out already when we were filtering for our earnings watch list, but this is how you can tell from the options chain. So that's going to be this thin purple line. So we can see here, Pinterest has an upcoming earnings announcement on April 25th. So maybe we want to set up um, a little bit, a little bit of earnings trade here um, and we'll go 17 days out here. So if we wanted to queue up something that's maybe uh, defi a defined risk trade, maybe we're feeling like uh, Pinterest won't really move very much during earnings. So we're going to make a, make more of a set up more of a neutral trade here. What we can do, we have a few different options. I want to show you all how to do it using the strategy selector off the bat here because we recently added a great new feature. It's our advanced strategy selector, which allows for a little bit more customization. But to access our strategy selector, we can click on this drop down arrow at the top of the page. You'll notice now we have a list of strategies that appear. So maybe we want to set up like a normal iron condor or something along those lines. What we can do is left click on iron condor here and you'll see it. It's maybe a little bit difficult to see right now, but you'll see how uh, the iron condor option is slightly darker than the rest of the options. That indicates that we currently have it selected. And then if we wanted to access our advanced uh, advanced trading strategy tools, what we can do is click on this show advanced bar off to the right. This will pull up the advanced strategy selector tools. And now we can filter for a specific amount of days until expiration. So maybe we wanted to go um, about 20 days out here. And then the target in the money or out of the money percentage. Let's maybe we wanted to go one standard deviation out. So if we click on this one SD button, our target in the money or out of the money legs will be now set to one standard deviation out. And then we can set our strikes width here. So maybe we wanted to make it uh, $5 wide. So we'll go strikes width, we'll go five. And then once we have all of our parameters set here, we can select go next to the normal iron condor button. 
And you'll notice now this will queue up in order for the May 10th expiration. You can see that in the upper left corner of the screen. And then it also factors in the other parameters that we have set. So our, our short strikes, they're about one standard deviation out. Um, you can see we have the 27 strike and the 40 strike selected. This blue dotted bar here, this will this will indicate uh, your one sta one standard a one standard deviation move. Um, so that's what that blue bar represents. The blue dotted line above it, that's a little bit more spaced out. That will represent a two standard deviation move. Um, so right now we set our short strikes right at the one standard deviation move, just like we had set up. If we're looking to make adjustments to this now, what we can do is we can actually left click and hold on one of the one of the boxes here. So if we're looking to adjust the short strike here, what we can do is left click and hold, and we can actually drag that strike to adjust it. And then let's say maybe we wanted to go to the 28 uh, strike. We could just drop it and we now have adjusted it to the 28 strike. So that's one way that you can adjust strikes even once you've uh, set the trade up using your strategy selector tool, or you can actually queue up the trade uh, yourself simply by clicking on the bid or the ask. I'll show you all how to do that right now. So we've went through how to use the strategy selector tool, um, but the strategy selector tool is not uh, necessary to use. You can, it's certainly there for um, your disposal if you would like to like to use it and uh, queue up a trade that way, but you can definitely queue up a trade just by clicking on the bid or the ask price um, for a specific option. And I'll show you all how to do that right now. So if we go ahead and just clear this trade, once again, we're in the May 10th expiration. So maybe we wanted to set up uh, that iron condor I was referring to. We'll sell the 28 strike. So we'll, we'll want to click on the bid price for the 28 strike. The puts will be off to the right side of your, your screen. So you can see here, the puts are located off to the right side of the screen. The strikes are down the middle, puts are on the right, calls will be on the left side of your screen. So I just wanted to point that out for you all. So right now we're setting up the put side of this condor. We're selling the 28 strike, and then maybe we want to buy the 25 strike. So now we click on the ask price for the 25 strike. You'll notice a green box appears around there indicating that we're buying. And now let's set up the call side of this trade. So what we can do is use the, we'll sell the 38 strike in this instance. And then let's go ahead and buy the 41 strike. Now, why did I pick the 38 strike? Well, if we take a look in the upper right corner of our screen here, you'll notice we get a little bit more information as well. So we get the um, IVX, and then we also get the expected move. So plus or minus $4.05. So this orange bar, on the list of strikes here will actually be representative of that expected move. Um, so I went to the 38 strike based on, basing it off of that orange bar. Um, I wanted to go just outside of the expected move uh, for my short strike there. So that's why I selected the 38 and then keeping just keeping it three points wide for the puts, we selected the uh, 28 and the 25. So to keep it three points wide, we went to the 41 strike as well. So now that we have this trade queued up, if we're looking to actually submit the order, what we can do is first we can make adjustments uh, to the limit price that we're submitting at. So right now it's in at 76, a 76 cent credit. We can see that at the bottom of the screen here. But let's say I don't want to fill this order right away, or maybe I want to see if I can get a little bit of a higher credit for it. Let's go ahead and bump that up. So we're going to change it from 76 cents. Let's go ahead and bump it to 80 cents. And then now once we've got it set to 80 cents, we can also adjust the time and force if you would like. Right now we have our order set to a good till cancel order, but you can also make an adjustment to that and select like, oop, let's see here. You can also select good till date, or you also have the option to do a day order um, for this option spread. So let's go ahead and change it to a day order. So now that we've got it, got our iron condor queued up, we're trying to sell it for an 80 cent credit. Uh, we also have it queued up as a day order. Right now, we're going to keep the quantity as one, but if you would like to adjust the quantity um, of condors that you're going to be opening up here, you can use these quantity arrows located right here. And you'll notice as I click the quantity arrows, 
the quantities will change in the bottom left corner of the screen here. So watch right now. I'll show you all what that looks like as I'm increasing the quantity. You'll see it bumps up the quantity for each of the legs. So it's kind of nice. You don't have to go through and select each of the legs um, and bump those quantities up individually. Um, it will adjust all the quantities at the same time. But for this example, we're going to keep this as one. Let's go ahead and clear the drawings and let's go ahead and fire the order off now. So once we're satisfied with everything we have set, we can go ahead and hit review and send in the bottom right corner of the screen. This will take us to our review, our review page. So on the review page, this is where you're going to be able to see commissions and fees charged. So we can see those lines here. Roughly when it comes to the fees, it's about 13 cents uh, per contract. And then on the commissions for opening orders, it will be $1 to open, uh, $0 in commissions to close. Uh, but you will still be paying fees when, when closing. And I'll show you all what that looks like later on. Uh, but this is where you get a breakdown of the commissions and fees. You can also see your estimated trade cost and how much your buying power is going to be reduced by when opening up this position. So now that we've gone through that, let's go ahead and fire this order off, send the order, and you'll see now in the upper left corner of our screen, we have that order working. We can also see if we pull out our right side panel here. So apologies, everybody. I did that a little quick just to uh, reiterate the right side panel. That is going to be our in the upper right corner of our screen. Let's pop that out one more time here. We'll dock it. And then you'll see now we can see our working order here on Pinterest um, in the bottom right corner of the screen. So this is what allows for that one screen trading that I mentioned earlier. We can also see this working order from our positions tab if you would like. So I'll show you all what that looks like here briefly. If we click on our positions tab in the upper left corner, you'll notice now we can see that working order on Pinterest from here as well. Uh, but maybe you're someone who, again, we're looking for efficiency here. So we don't wanna be clicking all over the platform. We could just why click from the trade tab to the positions tab when you could just manage the position directly from the trade tab in the first place. So with this right sidebar menu, we see that working order in the bottom right corner of the screen. Let's say now, let's see what it looks like when it gets filled. So in order to fill this uh, order, we're, we may have to change the price. What we can do to make an adjustment to the working order is if we place our cursor in the bottom right corner where that order is displayed and then right click, you'll notice we get a menu that pops up. It looks like Zoom may be slightly cutting off that last option there. It's for an opposite order, but you'll notice we get some options to cancel, replace, or do a similar order or an opposite order. In this case, we're going to replace the order. So we'll click on replace. And from here, we have that replace order queued up on our screen. So we'll go ahead and bump the price down now to maybe something closer to the natural price, just so I could show you all what it looks like when getting filled here. And this is good to know as well, if you're ever trying to submit orders and you're having a difficult time getting filled, um, you, you'll wanna take a look at this price bar at the bottom of the screen. So right now you could see the mid price is going to be at about a 76 cent credit. But then to the left of that, we can actually see the natural price is at 67 cents. So since this is a limit order um, and I wanna try and get it filled right away, I'm gonna try and work something closer to that natural price just to so show you all what a fill will look like. So let's go ahead and make that adjustment now. Let's bump the price down maybe to We'll call it about 70 cents here. And then once we're at the 70 cent credit, we'll go ahead and hit review and send, fire the order off. You'll notice now we just got filled on that trade so we could see that filled message in the upper left corner of our screen. We also now see that filled order off to the right side of our screen. So that little activity tab in the bottom right corner of our screen, we can see the Pinterest trade has been filled. Excuse me. And then we can also see under the position detail here, we have we currently have that iron condor here um, on Pinterest as well. So the position detail tab, this will show your current position in your active underlying. So you'll notice we still have Pinterest active all across the platform. So this is currently showing any open position that we have on Pinterest. And then, uh, okay, let's see here. Now that we've got our Pinterest trade filled, maybe we want to go through and analyze a couple of our profit and loss zones on this, uh, on this iron condor that we just filled. So what we can do, 
is actually navigate over to our curve and analysis mode. So right now we're in the in the table trading mode, but to get to the curve mode, we have to click on this drop down box in the upper left corner of the screen. Choose curve. And then we will go ahead and switch over to analysis. And now from here, we get a nice graphical representation of our profit and loss zones at expiration. Let me see if I can get this to fit a little bit better for you all. There we go. Now you could, should be able to see everything. Perfect. So right now, a couple of settings I wanted to point out here on the curve and analysis mode. Um, right now, we're just analyzing the profit and loss zones at expiration. And I'll show you all how you can analyze theoretical profit and loss zones in just a moment here. Uh, but we're going to go through the at expiration settings to, start, to start here. So what you'll want to have selected is the PL EXP button in the upper left corner. You'll also want to have under zones, you'll want to have at EXP selected. So at expiration selected. This is how you can get the profit or loss graph at expiration. So you'll notice here as we move our cursor over the graph, we get a little bit little information box at the top of the cursor. Um, I'm not sure if you all can see it there. It says like the date, the price. So here we go, right where my cursor is right now. Date, price, PL expiration, and PL theoretical. So in this instance, we have the PL at expiration graph pulled up. So you'll really only want to be paying attention to the PL at expiration number for right now. And you'll notice as we move our cursor along here, so it looks like if Pinterest is trading at a price between you know $28 and about $38 come expiration, we will be at our max profit of $70. But if Pinterest were to be trading, let's say as we move our cursor further over uh, past the, if it was trading above $41 per share, we'd be at our max loss of $230. Or if it were, were to be trading at a price lesser than $25 per share, we would also be at our max loss of $230. Okay, now when it comes to the theoretical line here, we'll want to make some adjustments to our settings that we have at the top of the analysis mode here. So you'll rem remember before we had PL at EXP selected, now we are going to select PL Theo. And under zones, we are also going to select Theo for zones. So I'll show you all how that changes the graph now. So we'll change to Theo and then PL Theo. Move the at expiration. So this is our theoretical profit and loss zone based on the current parameters that we have set. So we can make adjustments to the parameters off to the right side of our page here. Right now we're in the analysis mode. Uh, so we can make an adjustment. So if we wanted to evaluate this position at a specific date, we can do that here or at a specific uh, spot price. We can make adjustments to that here as well. Then at the bottom, we can also change the contra uh, per contract volatility or implied volatilities to see how that may change our theoretical profit and loss. And I'll show, show you all how that looks in just a moment here. I want to point out one more thing. In the upper right corner, you'll notice this PL Theo value will also be changing. Um, in addition to the graph, as we are making adjustments to either the date, uh, the spot price, or the implied volatilities. So I just wanted to point that out, and you all can follow along how those will change as I'm making adjustments right now. So let's see. This is going. This uh, this trade is set to expire. I believe it, we did the May 10th expiration. So maybe we wanted to evaluate at the evaluate what the trade may look like at a specific price. Let me see here. There we go. Okay. So maybe we wanted to evaluate what our theoretical profit and loss zones may look like at a specific date. Let's go to the end of the month here. So we'll go to April 30th. We can select this little calendar box here. Brings up a nice little calendar. And then um, just to point it out here, it shows the expiration date. It's highlighted in yellow on the calendar. So we can see it's the May 10th expiration. Um, so let's evaluate our pro theoretical profit and loss zones as of April 30th, assuming there's no change in price, no change in implied volatility. Um, if everything, if all, those were to re remain constant and the only thing that passed was time, so we got closer to expiration, this is what our theoretical profit and loss zones would be looking like. And you can see what your theoretical profit and loss would be by looking at that PL Theo figure right here as we're moving our cursor from left to right on the graph.
You could also change the spot price. So let's say maybe on April 30th, um, Pinterest may be trading at let's say $35 per share, type that in. We'll see how that affects the graph. And then maybe we wanted to make adjustments to the um, implied volatility here on the contracts we currently have selected. So you'll see as I'm increasing the implied volatility that PL theoretical graph is changing. As I decrease it, PL theoretical graph is changing. So that's how you can evaluate uh, your theoretical profit and loss of a specific position based on certain parameters um, using our curve and analysis mode. I know that was we covered it very, very briefly there, but if you're interested in doing a deep dive, Christian did post a great video on our YouTube channel that goes in depth on how to use all of these different parameters to evaluate these positions. Um, it's only about 10 to 12 minutes long, so it's definitely worth the watch if this is a feature that you're interested in learning more about. And then Christian just linked it there in the chat. Okay, great. So I know we've gone through quite a bit so far, everybody. I just want to take a pause for a brief moment here to see if there's anything you all wanted me to uh cover once again. Otherwise, I want to get into rolling um, a couple of options here and how you can track those rolls in your order chains feature on the right sidebar menu here. But before I do that, are there any questions, anything you all want me to cover again? It doesn't look like it. Okay, Jerry. Yep, we could do an OCO. Uh, I'll show you all how to do that once uh, once we finish up with the with the order chains here. But yeah, any any questions or anything you all want me to cover again? I'm gonna try and finish this thing about ten minutes early, so then we can have uh, some good time for a little Q and A section. So if there's anything you want me to cover again later on in the demo, we should be able to get to it during that Q and A section. But in any instance, let's go ahead and get into rolling position or rolling uh, a couple of our options now and tracking those roles in the order chains. So with this Pinterest position here, let's go ahead and go to our positions tab. I just want to show you all a different look here. So we're going to go to the positions tab. Once we're in the positions tab, if we left click on Pinterest, you'll notice it will populate them with our iron condor and how I was able to get iron condor shown here. This is going to be based off of how you have your positions grouped. So this is something I like to mention to uh, people as well. If you um, are trading, maybe you have a bunch of different spreads on a specific underlying, we have a couple of different ways that you can actually group those out. Um, personally, my favorite order chains, but you can use, you can group this however you would like. But right now I have order chains selected at the top of the page here. So as I put on new spread positions, like if I were to put on a vertical in Pinterest, I would have then two separate positions listed here. So one would say iron condor, it would have the legs listed. And then underneath that, it would say vertical and it would have the legs listed for that vertical. So that's when grouping by order chains. Uh, but if you didn't want to have that extra line there, you can definitely group by symbol if you would like. Or uh, you can even do a custom group. Um, I'm sure Christian or Andy can go ahead and link out to a video that we have that goes over custom grouping. Uh, we may be able to touch on it briefly at the end of the demo today as well. Uh, but if not, I'm sure they can link out a, a great, uh, great article or video to how to actually do custom grouping. Personally, I like, like to keep mine set on order chains. So that's what I'm going to change it back to. Now that we have order chains selected, let's say maybe we wanted to uh, roll up the put side here of our iron condor, what we can do to roll the puts is left click on each of the puts here. So left click on the 28 strike and the 25 strike. Once we have them selected, place your cursor in the highlighted area and then right click. You'll notice from here, we get a couple of different options. So we could do a quick roll. We could just roll the expirations or if we're looking to roll the strikes, uh, maybe we wanted to roll the strikes up. So we get, uh, Nice quick little quick little action menu here uh, to quickly put in that uh, the roll of the strikes or select a specific expiration. Again, I mentioned we're going to keep the expiration the same. I think let's just go ahead and roll up the strikes. So we're going to choose up from the menu here, and you'll notice now we have an order queued up to roll up the put side of our condor. So as you can see in the bottom left corner, we're going from the 25 and 28 strike puts to the 26 and 29 strike. And that's all going to be what, what your action is on those options is all going to be denoted uh, by the STC, BTO, 
BTC or STO. So that stands for sell to close, buy to open, buy to close, or sell to open. Um, so we can see that here. We will be selling to close the 25 strike put, buying to open the 26, buying to close the 28, and then selling to open the, the 29 strike put based on those order details in the bottom left corner of our screen. So once we are satisfied with the uh, order we have queued up, again, just as I showed you earlier, um, we selected to roll the strikes up, but maybe you wanted to widen the condor out. You can make a manual adjustment here by left clicking and holding inside of one of the boxes and then dragging, oops, let me change that back. And then dragging down to adjust the, dragging and dropping to adjust the strike. So if maybe we wanted to sell the 30 strike instead of the 29. We can drag and drop and change that. In this case, we're gonna keep it $3 wide. So let's drag and drop it back up to the 29 strike. And then again, using our price bar at the bottom of our screen, this is what we're going to determine, use to help us determine what price uh, we should possibly submit this at to uh, get the quickest fill here. I want to show you all what it looks like. So I'm just going to aim for the quickest fill here. Um, let's go ahead and bump the price down from 16 cents. Let's go ahead and bump it down to 10 cents here and see if we could get filled on this. Now, before I submit this order, oh, looks like... Let's go to do, 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 the three cent credit. Okay. Before I submit this order, I just want to point out, um, once I place this, this is going to be a day trade because I opened the 25 and 28 strikes today. I'd be closing that same position today. So that therefore would be a day trade. So just be aware of that um, as, you're, as you're trading as well. So I, I've got my limit price selected at a three cent credit here. Now we're going to go ahead and hit review and send. Send the order off. And you'll notice now we actually got filled at 11 cents there. So a lot, a lot better than what we were, uh, what we were submitted at. So we were able to get filled in an 11 cent credit. So now that we've rolled that position, um, if you're someone who usually tracks your role, if you roll options a lot and you usually track your roles using like an Excel spreadsheet or something along those lines, uh, well, news for you, you can take that spreadsheet and throw it out the window um, if you would like, because those debits and credits collected from rolls are actually all tracked for you here on on the Tasty Trade platform. So those are going to, going to be tracked using our order chains feature, which is in the right sidebar menu. And as I mentioned earlier, this right sidebar is very, very useful. It allows for the one screen trading. It has the uh, it has the order chains feature. And then we were able to make adjustments to our position in, in the analysis mode from here. So this right sidebar menu is a really, really great feature. Um, if you haven't checked it out before, I definitely uh, suggest reading our Help Center article about all the different uh, all the different features we have available here. So we're gonna go ahead and click into our order chains feature right now. You'll notice now we get our open positions on Pinterest will populate. And if you're trading different symbols, maybe you wanted to track roles that you've done on a different symbol, all you would have to do is come up in the upper left corner of that right sidebar menu. Um, so right now where it says Pinterest, you could just type in your desired symbol that you're looking to pull the order chains up for. We're going to keep it on Pinterest right now because that's what we're currently trading. But you can see here, our position started out, we opened an iron condor for a 70 cent credit. And then we rolled the position. So time and date are also shown here of when those rolls occurred. Uh, we rolled the position for an 11 cent credit. And then now we'll notice at the top of the page, we get an average trade price here. So that 11 cents plus the 70 cents we originally co corrected or collected, the total amount comes out to an 80 cent or 81 cent credit that's been corrected in total, uh, taking into account the original position that we opened and the roll. So you don't have to worry about manually tracking this yourself anymore. The order chains feature just literally adds adds or uh, subtracts those debits or credits uh, based on what uh, you got for that rolled position. So we got a credit added to our uh, total credit received at 81 cents. We also get a breakdown of the total profit and loss on the position so far. And then we can see a the current mark price uh, being the mid. So the current mark price of that spread is also displayed here. And then I also wanted to point out this yellow circle here. So right now it's a yellow outline. Um, this indicates that the position is still open. If this were to be a filled in blue circle, so a solid blue circle, that would indicate that the position is closed. Um, so we can tell this position is still open. One of two ways we could see that yellow circle, or it also says open position here at the top. 
So that would be a really cool way uh, using the order chains, how you can track your debits or credits received from rolls. Um, again, it makes things much, much simpler. If you're someone who's constantly rolling um, options, order chains is going to be your best friend uh, when it comes to cre tracking those debits or credits received. Hey, now that we've covered the order chains feature here, everybody, is there um, any any questions that you all have for me in the in the meantime? Otherwise, I just want to show you all how we can um, reconcile profit and loss on the platform um, on some closed trades, and then after that, we can open it up to a Q and A section here. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's anything. Uh, Crazy so far. Oh, yes. Uh, bracket order. Somebody did mention OCO. That's what I was going to go to after. All right. I'll show you all how to do an OCO order right now um, in addition to a stop. So if you're just looking to set up a stop order by itself, or if you're looking to set up both a stop loss and a take profit, you could do that um, as well using the bracket order feature. So let's go ahead and dive right into that. Now, if we're looking to set up just a traditional stop order, what we can do from our right sidebar menu here, if we go back to the overview tab, we can now see we have our position description displayed here. Um, so because we have those closed trades, uh, the May 25th and May 28th expiration, do not select those from the position detail here. So if we're looking to close out of our condor or set up maybe a stop order on our condor here on Pinterest, what we can do is left click on the 26 strike, 29 strike, the 38 strike and the 41 strike. So they are all highlighted. So very similar to how you would do that in the positions tab. I'll show you all how to do that right now as well. So if you were looking to do the same thing from the positions tab here, navigate to positions, we'll collapse this for right now. And then it would literally just be the same exact thing we just did. So you just left click on all of these legs to select them. You'll notice they're already highlighted because we selected them previously. And then right click and choose close position. Now this is just going to be for a stop order. I'll go back and show how to do a bracket order um, in just a moment here. But if you're looking to just set up a stop order, you would click on close position. And then in the bottom right corner of our screen, we are going to change the order type from net debit. We are going to change this to a stop limit order. So left click on that box and then select stop limit. Now you'll notice we have two different price boxes that appear, one for our stop trigger that being the first one, and then one for our limit price uh, that we would eventually like to close the position out at. So with the stops on spreads, uh, we only offer stop limit orders. You cannot do a stop market order on a spread. So you will have to set these two prices each time you're trying to set a stop on a, uh, on a spread here. So first and foremost, we'll set our stop price. So our stop trigger, maybe we wanted to uh, set our stop trigger at $1.50, so $1.50. And then our limit price, we're gonna go a little bit higher than $1.50 just to give our, ourselves some cushion here. Uh, we'll go to $1.55. So once we have our stop limit and, or our, I'm sorry, our stop trigger and our stop limit price set, and we're satisfied with how we have the rest of the order set up, we have a good till cancel order set, we can hit review and send. Once again, reviewing the commissions and fees here, it, since this is a closing order, $0 in commissions on closing orders, uh, but you will be charged about, again, it's about 13 cents per leg, um, or I'm sorry, 13 cents per contract um, in fees. So you can see those fees displayed here, and then we can go ahead and send the order off. You'll notice now we have the working order, and then we can see that working order, once again, in our positions tab as well, if we would like. Uh, so we can see that working order displayed here. And if we're looking to make an adjustment to that or even just straight up cancel it, we can right click on the working order, hit cancel. You'll notice now that working order has been canceled. So now that I've showed you all how to do a just a stop order, we can also uh, do a bracket order or an OC, OCO order like someone had referenced earlier. Uh, we call them bracket orders. You can do that. You can set that up as well from the positions tab. So very similar to how we set up that uh, closing stop order. 
if you left click on each of the legs to, to highlight them, once you have each of the legs highlighted, you will want to right click and then choose bracket from the menu that appears here. So upon choosing bracket, you'll notice we get a nice bracket order window that pops up. And in the bracket order window, we have three main boxes uh, that you'll want to be aware of. The first one off to the left, this is going to be our position that's already been opened. So you're not going to be able to make any adjustments to this box here because this position's already been open. So no adjustments necessary there. But off to the right, we have our green close at profit box and then our red stop loss box. So let's say maybe we wanted to set up like a 70% uh, target profit. So what we can do here, you can adjust your, your take profit order one of two ways. If you're looking to set a specific uh, limit price, you could set that set that price here. Or if you're looking to go based off a of percentage, you can also uh, use this target profit percentage box. So uh, let's go ahead and hit the up arrow on this to get us actually now here, we'll just go to right to 70%. We'll type it in. And then, whoops, 70 tab so after you've set your uh, after you've set your target profit percentage type it in just go ahead and hit the tab key on your on your keyboard and then that will set up in a closing order at 70% profit which in turn also comes out to 25 uh 25% limit or I'm sorry 25 cent limit price once we're satisfied with our close at profit target we can also set up our stop loss so similar to that uh, stop loss we just set up, you'll have two prices that you need to set here. Um, you can set your stop trigger and also your stop limit price. So right now we have, or you could just base it off a of stop loss percentage. Right now we have it at 100% loss. Um, we're going to bump that down uh, pretty similar to, or pretty close to what we just previously had set. So we'll bump it down from $1.68 here. Using these arrows, we'll go down to $1.55. And then on the stop trigger, we'll give ourselves a, about a five cent cushion between that trigger and the limit price. So we'll bump that down to $1.50. And then same thing, once we're satisfied with the prices we have set, we can double check our time in force on the order ticket here. We can see these are both set up as good till cancel orders. So we'll leave those uh, for the time being. But if you wanted to adjust and make them day orders, just click on the drop down and choose day or good till date. Um, again, we're just gonna keep them as good till cancels. So once we're satisfied with the bracket order, review and send, and then this takes us to our review screen. You can see commissions, fees, and then buying power effect all listed here. And then we'll go ahead and send the order off. And now you can see we have those working orders on uh, on Pinterest here. So we can see we have the working order to close uh, the or I'm sorry, you can see we have the working order to close at a percent profit. That's going to be this first one displayed here. And then we also have the working order or the stop loss order underneath it. All right, sorry, everybody. I just want to go through the uh, through the chat here to make sure I'm not missing anything. And you set up a closing order uh, based on option delta. Um, so as of right now, you cannot, but I'm sure that's something we uh, may be looking to bring to, uh, to the platform in the future using some sort of conditional order. Uh, conditional orders are not yet available, um, but we hope to have those available within the coming months here. All right, everybody, before I open this up into a little bit of Q&A uh, right at the end, I want to show you a couple more things here. I want to go back to the order chains feature real quick. Um, just to show you one neat thing there and then show you all how you can actually view um, the chart for a specific option as well. So let's go ahead and pop out our order chains feature one more time here. So if we take a look in the upper right corner, it's going to be the left facing arrow. We'll pop that out, pop out that right sidebar. And then we are going to navigate to the order chains feature right here. So once we've got the order chains pulled up, um, if you were to right click, on this rolled uh, rolled option or the uh, rolling order here. If you were to right click, you actually get a little option to view market state snapshots. So if you were to click on that, we can actually see what these, so these yellow diamonds here. Now we've only rolled this trade, uh, rolled this trade once, but if you're someone who's rolled a ton of times, obviously, obviously you're gonna have more data displayed here. Um, but what you can see 
uh, we could see what the price of Pinterest was trading at at the time of our, our role based on the current options we have selected. So right now we're filtering based on underlying last price. So the last price on uh, Pinterest uh, when we originally opened the position here was a little bit over about $32 and uh, 78 cents per share. Then when we rolled it, we put our cursor on the diamond. We get a little more information here. Last price was $32.61. Now, this is just the underlying last price. You get a bunch more information as well. You can see IV rank. You can see IV index, delta, and then also theta are options as well under the market state snapshots. So that's one other thing I wanted to point out with the order chains there. Um, it's a cool little feature to uh, just, just see uh, maybe what the under, or what the price of the underlying was looking looking like um, when you made your adjustments to the trade. Um, it's a cool little tracking feature that's uh, also implemented into our order chains. So now that we've gone through that, I want to show you all how we can uh, actually view the chart for a specific option. So if you're looking to view the chart for an option, let's go ahead and take us back into the trade tab here. We placed quite a few trades on Pinterest. Let's pull something else up here. Maybe we want to take a look at Apple. So in our active trade symbol, we just type in the symbol for Apple, select it from the menu, and now we'll go over to our trade tab. So And that's going to be off to the left side of the page here, the trade tab. Once we've got the trade tab pulled up, we can just click into... Um, any expiration here, we'll go to the May 17th expiration. And then maybe we're interested in viewing the uh, historical options chart for, let's say, like the 150 put that we have here. So what we can do is place our cursor on the uh, to the right of the strikes on the line for the 150 put. Place your cursor on that line and then right click. If you right click, you'll get the option to view, get the option to view the option in a chart here. So select that from the menu. And this is how you can get um, the historical options chart for that specific option. And you can make adjustments to the chart here as well. You can adjust uh, aggregation and time interval at the top of the screen. Right now, uh, we have the five minute, five day pulled up, but you could take this all the way down to uh, just today. And then the one minute chart, if that's something you're interested in. Um, so you can make adjustments to that chart as you deem fit. All right, I see uh, someone was asking in here how we can make an adjustment to uh, the specific quant the quantity of one specific leg. I showed you all earlier with the iron condor, how nice it is when you use the quantity arrows. Um, all the quantities automatically adjust for you. But maybe you're someone who's interested in trading like a butterfly or a ratio spread and you only want to adjust the quantity for one. I can show you all how to do that right now. So let's go ahead and head back into our trade tab. We'll just stay in Apple here for the for the time being. Um, let's say maybe we wanted to set up a uh, set up a butterfly here. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll buy the 145. We'll sell the 150, and then we will buy the 155. So you'll notice now once we've clicked on the bid or the ask. So to buy, we click on the ask. To sell, we click on the bid. Once we've got all three three legs of our butterfly selected, you'll notice here in the bottom left corner of the screen. The quantities all say one. And then if we were to just use the quantity arrows, it's going to bump them all to two. So how do we get that short strike to change to two, but keep the long strikes at a quantity of one? Well, in order to do that, let's go ahead and bump that quantity back down for a second here. In order to just adjust the quantity of that middle strike, we can place our cursor inside of the red box here for the 150 strike. So just place it inside of the box here in, in the blank space and then left click. You see how it highlights in blue? That's one way to individually single out that leg. Or you could just come down here to the bottom of the, the bottom of the order details and double left click. And you'll notice it will also highlight there. So it's really your preference, whether it's placing your cursor inside of the box and left clicking once, or just double left clicking from the order details in the bottom left corner. That will individually select that leg. Now we can go in and use the quantity arrows. So we'll bump the quantity up here. And you'll notice now, only the quantity for the short strike has adjusted. Uh, the long strikes both have a quantity of one still listed. So that would be the way that you adjust the quantity on a on a single specific leg. Um, if you're trying to trade like a butterfly or a ratio spread or any other sort of a custom spread you may be setting up that requires the quantities to be different, that would be the way that you go about setting those up. Uh, 
Okay. And then also while we're on the options, uh, options table here, I do want to show you all a couple, a uh, couple of the customizable options or features that we have, um, in terms of the column header. So the bidder ask at the top, those will remain constant. You're not able to remove those because those are necessary when queuing up an order, you have to click on either the bid or the ask price to select whether or not you're buying or selling. So those will remain constant. But what I wanted to bring your attention to is actually going to be the co the column headers on the outside. Um, so you'll notice they have these little circular icons next to them. That would indicate that they are customizable. So based on screen size or resolution, you can actually get up to four customizable columns. So two more outside of what I currently have available. Um, so again, that's going to be based off of screen size or resolution. Um, right now, I, I have two customizable columns here. So if you're looking to adjust what's shown there, all you need to do is left click on the header itself and a list of different options pops up. So right now, we have the, what do we have here selected right now? Is it last price? Yeah, we have last price selected right now. Maybe we are interested in checking the Delta. So what we can do is choose Delta from the menu here. And now you'll notice all those Deltas appear. EXT, that's going to be the extrinsic value um, associated with the option. Uh, so if you're looking, again, you, that's another customizable uh, feature here on the trade tab. So you could sit, uh, set that to your liking, whether you want to see the Delta, maybe you were interested in checking out the volume, uh, click on the header here. You could also select volume contracts traded. So you could see all that information from the options chain as well. Okay. And then just before we wrap things up here, everybody, I do see, um, let's see here. How do we set capital use for a trade that happened in the past? So if you're looking for um, capital use on a trade that happened in the past, now, um, are you are you going to be referring to your, uh, that position still open, I'm assuming, uh, because you wouldn't really care for a position that's, that's closed. So if it's a position that's still open, um, you're going to be able to see what your capital required is for that position by coming to the positions tab here. And then if we take a look in the upper right corner of our screen, we have a cap rec button. So this is going to show our current position requirements. You click on cap rec. You'll see our current requirement right now on Pinterest is $205. So we could see those current requirements under this first column here. So that would be the way that you check uh, the requirement to open a um, the requirement to hold a position. Uh, you also get initial and maintenance requirements as well. So like if you were trading stock, for example, um, standard industry standard requirements would be like fifty in a margin account at least. Uh, industry standard requirements would be fifty percent initial, twenty five percent maintenance. So that's where you could see those initial and maintenance requirements as well, um, in addition to your current requirement. Again, that is from the cap rec button in the upper right corner of the screen. All right, everybody, I think I'm going to go ahead and get things wrapped up here in just a moment. Here we go. Uh, yep. Show profit and loss. Yes. I will show you all how you can reconcile profit or loss of a trade right now. So let's go ahead and actually close out of this Pinterest trade. And then uh, I could show you all live here on the platform what that looks like. So we're going to go ahead and cancel that bracket order from earlier. In order to do that, you just right click on one of the working orders, choose cancel complex order. That will cancel the order. Now we can set up a new closing order here on uh, Pinterest. So we already have all the legs selected. Let's go ahead and right click, choose close position. And then from here, we have a closing order queued up. Um, right now, let's go ahead and just to make sure we get a fill, we'll bump that price up to 95 cent debit. So it looks like we may be taking a little bit of a loss on this one. Go ahead and send the order off. Got filled there at 95 cents. Oops. All right, now let's go ahead and head on over to our history tab. So this is going to be the clock icon off to the left side of the screen. Click on that history tab. Now we can get a history of everything we've traded today. Um, in this case, it's primarily been uh, Pinterest. So we could just, we don't have to make any uh, additional adjustments here, but maybe you're looking for a specific symbol um, that you traded on let's say maybe 30 days ago. So you could go, you could change the date filter here at the top of the screen. 
filter for the last 30 days. You also have the option to do a custom filter or choose from one of the other preset options. So we'll just go last 30 days. Then maybe you traded SPY. You could search for a specific symbol. Um, so this would be the way to find a specific trade that you did. You could filter by both uh, symbol and then a specific date as well. But let's just go back to our Pinterest, pin, uh, Pinterest trade we made here. So we'll go pins. And then this is going to type up our Pinterest trades from today. So you'll get a time and date stamp off to the left side of the screen here. And then off to the right, this is going to be all of the debits or credits received from this trade. So this, uh, the reason so many different options are coming up here is because we did roll this position, um, if you all recall. So that roll is also tracked here as well. I still prefer um, order chains just for uh, the simplicity because it gives you the number uh, right there. But this is a great way to go back and reconcile your profit or loss from a previous trade. So if you take a look off to the right side here, we have all the debits or credits. And then if you look at the top, we get a total amount. So based on all of our trades here um, on Pinterest today, uh, both the original opening order, the rolling order, and then finally the closing position, it looks like unfortunately we did uh, have a $14 loss. And we can also see commissions and fees that were charged as well um, at the top of these columns. So that would be a nice way that you can reconcile the profit or loss on uh, previously closed trades. Okay. How can you see? Okay. I see it here in QA. How can you see the iron condor results, not individual options? So um, I believe you're probably referring to these individual legs here. So if you just want to see the results of the iron condor, um, order chains, that's going to be the best, best way in my opinion. So pop out those order chains one more time. You'll notice now, like I referenced uh, earlier, that yellow circle when the position was open, indicating it was open, is now filled in in blue, indicating the position is closed. We can see the total profit and loss um, on the iron condor without having to look at the prices for each individual legs. We see the total profit or loss on that iron condor right here in the order chains. So if you're looking just for the, just for the um, profit or loss on the position as a whole, order chains, it's going to be great for that as well. All right, everybody. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. Uh, but just before I just before I do that, I did just want to point out one more thing here on the platform. Um, so that is going to be this question mark icon at the bottom of bottom left side of the screen here. This is going to give you access to our help center. Um, so our help center is going to be a great great resource. Let me get that pulled in here for you all. Okay. So our help center is going to be a great, great resource uh, when it comes to learning more about the platform. We have over 400 articles on here. So let's say, like I mentioned earlier, that right sidebar menu, I kept talking about it, how uh, it could be used to create the most efficient trading experience. You have the order chains, you have the analysis uh, tab. So there's a lot of great, great features in there. Maybe you're interested in uh, uh, going over those again or learning more about it in general. If we just go ahead and type in right sidebar, you'll notice a article will populate for our right sidebar menu. And then from here, you can read all about the right sidebar, both on the desktop and web browser platform. So that's a great, great tool. If you're ever in a pinch um, and you're trying to, you want to learn more about something that you see on the platform, this is going to be a great tool. Another great resource is going to be us here on the desk. Um, I mean, if you're ever looking to find out information quickly, um, I would definitely say, give us a call. That's going to be the, the best way to get in touch with us. And anybody that you get here on the desk, whether it be myself, Christian, Andy, or any other other reps here, we're all happy to help you out. Happy to, happy to talk to you. And we could definitely get your answer or get your questions answered in the mo in a very, very quick and efficient fashion. So if you're looking to contact us, all of our contact information can be found here on the Help Center. So we have our phone number listed here. You can also chat in. That would be this box in the bottom right corner. And then finally, we also have our um, emails that you can reach us at as well. So all of our contact information is displayed here on the Help Center. Um, again, if you're, I think our support team's great. They're everybody here on the desk is awesome, awesome people, great to talk to. So if you ever, uh, ever have a question, please don't be afraid to pick up the phone, give us a call. We're happy to help you out. But all right, everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things 
up here. I appreciate you all coming out to today's uh, options trading demo. And uh, yeah, I hope you all hope you all enjoyed. There will likely be a recording of this posted within the next day or so. So be on the lookout for that on our YouTube channel if you're interested in checking that out. And then uh, we do have an upcoming demo next week that should be here. So we do have an upcoming demo. Uh, that's going to be our mobile platform demo on the 25th. So if you're someone who uh, trades a lot on your mobile phone or you're just interested in learning more about the mobile platform, definitely come by and check that one out. It's going to be a great, great demo. I think Christian's got that one. So be on the lookout for that. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for you all today. Um, I hope you all have a great rest of your day and uh, thanks for coming out.